Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I don't think that I clarified this enough, so I'm going to repeat it now on Tuesday. I don't film on weekends. I just can't film on weekends or holidays because I'm never home. I'm, I'm never home. And in order for me to successfully film a video, I would have to leave wherever I'm at to get home at a decent time while I'm not tired. So I decided that I would just film on the weekdays. But I do have some footage from, I believe, Saturday and Monday, if I'm not mistaken. And I will put them in right now. You guys want to see something really gross? I'm going to show you this. So I went to the doctor yesterday. And um, I got medicine, but I also went to the doctor to do some, like, earwax removal. And it didn't come out, so I was prescribed to use this medicine um, to do it overnight. And look. Ew, that's my earwax that came out. Isn't that disgusting? Oh, and there's also a hair, but that did not come from my ear. Hello, everybody. Welcome back from this morning. Uh, it is 10.30 now. Uh, I am on my way to Mead, Washington. I'm going to be riding horses today. But first, I need to stop at North 40, which is actually not that far from where I'm going to be riding horses at and pick up a helmet. My head is insanely small that no one else's helmet fits me. So let's go to North 40. Meet you there. All right. I just made it to North 40. I went in and I got a helmet for right. Um, the weirdest thing is this is a teal helmet, okay? It is very much teal. But for some reason on camera, it comes out as blue. I swear to you, it's not blue. This is what it looks like. That is, I don't know why it's that color. It's so weird, but it's not that blue. It's teal. I got it because my aunt loves teal. And I thought she would like me seeing me wearing it, so. Okay. Let's get going to the place where I have to help them load the horses. Because, you know, why would I show up and not help? If I'm riding their horses. Alright, we are gathering the horses. We have four horses and four people. And now we're heading off to um, the arena. Let's go. Fantastic flight to see that Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Although all my players are spot on and terrified, there's just not enough shrimp. So I'm going to know my dilemma. I can only take two of these chefs into the final round. It is your job to decide who's Olive. Uh, uh. Gosh, you scared me. <laughs> I thought you were dead. <laughs> I'm at uh, the cemetery and I look like an idiot because I can't find my grandparents' grave. Uh, I know it's around here somewhere. Like, around here. I, I thought it was like right here. I don't know. Where are my grandparents? Oh, I look like an idiot. Everyone's like by the grave, by the family, except moi. Oh my gosh, I feel so embarrassed. Grandma and grandpa, where are you? I hope you guys enjoyed those clips. I do not know what I put on. Or well, not what I put on, but what I filmed. But I think one of them is really gross. So, you're welcome. So, today we are reading um, Acts chapter... F I don't even know what we're reading. I should have looked. I don't look. Well, I, I did put a thing here. I think, we're, I think we're reading chapter 6. Hmm. I think we're reading actually chapter 7 because this was Stephen yeah chapter 7 
let's begin. How far is this? Ooh, it's a long one. I think I might, um, I think I might read, um, half of it, because it's 60 verses. Oof. So let's read 30 today and 30 tomorrow. How about that? All right. We have an agreement. Oh. I brought this in for this reason. Got my Red Bull at 6 p.m. Oh, no, 5.30. Mmm. It was in my car and it's hot. Then said the high priest, Are these things so? And he said, Men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Charan. And said unto him, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I have, which I shall show thee. Then came in, oh, excuse me, and then came he out of the land of Chaldeans, and dwelt in Charan, and from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into, his, into this land, wherein ye now dwell. And he gave him none inheritance in it, no, not so much as to set his foot on, yet he promised that he would give it to him for a, for a possession, and to his seed after him, when as yet he had no child. And God spake on the on this wise that his seed should sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring them into bondage, and entreat them evil four hundred years. I cannot read today, I'm so sorry. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God. And after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham begat Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day. And Isaac begat Jacob and Jacob begat the twelve patriarchs. And the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt. But God was with him and delivered him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. Now there came a dearth, a, yeah, a dearth over all the land of Egypt. And, is this Canaan or Canaan? Canaan, or the CH? And great affliction. And our fathers found no sustenance. But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. And at the second time Joseph was made known to his brethren, and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. Then sent Joseph, and called his father Jacob to him, and all his kindred, three score and fifteen souls. So Jacob went down into Egypt and died, he and his fathers, and our fathers and were carried over into Sychem and laid in the sepulcher. And Abraham brought for a sum of money of the sons of Emmer and the fathers of Sychem. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham that the people grew and multiplied in Egypt, till another king arose, which knew not Joseph, the same dealt sub subtilly with our kindred, and evil entreated our fathers, so that they cast out their young children to the end. They might not live. In which time Moses was born, and was exceeded fair, and nourished up in his father's house three months. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughters took him up, and nourished him for, his, for her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and was mighty in words and in deeds. And when he was full forty years old, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him, and avenged him that was oppressed, and smote the Egyptian. 
for he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them, but they understood not. And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove, and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, ye are brethren, why do ye wrong to another? But he that did his neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Wilt thou kill me, as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? Then fled Moses at the same, and was a stranger in the land of Midian, where he begat two sons. And when forty years were expired, there appeared to him in the wilderness of Mount Sinai an angel of the Lord in a flame of fire in a bush. Basically, the whole Exodus is being, well, Genesis and Exodus is being uh, foretold, not foretold, it already happened, uh, is uh, being um, discussed in this moment. Um, so that was uh, uh, verse 30. We will continue 31 to 60 tomorrow. I love you guys a lot, and I hope that you guys have a rest of, of, of the good rest of your night. Plus, I have some good news. I have air conditioning. I got an air conditioning unit right there, blowing out cold air. It's taking some time because, you know, it, it is a pretty massive room if you really think about it. But it, I'm starting to cool off, which is amazing. Like, I'm really happy about it. I'm not complaining at all. Bye-bye.